What are the mechanisms that allow us to adapt to extreme altitude and lack of oxygen? What role do genetics play? Sherpa Everest is a pioneering project whose goal is to try and find the answers. A team of scientists from Barcelona travel to the Himalayas to join the expedition of mountaineer Ferran Latore, who has just climbed Everest, his 14th and final 8,000er. It's been a long and tough journey. This is my temporary home, the tent here. You try to adapt things to your needs, but of course you spend many hours here alone and you miss your home, your house, the people. There are times when you feel a bit down. La Torre is one of the project's so-called guinea pigs. At a field hospital 5,400 meters high at Everest Base Camp, doctors working on the project took samples from 15 mountaineers from all over the world and 22 Sherpas. As electricity is a rare commodity here, the blood samples were kept cold in the icefall of the Kumbu Glacier. From there, they were flown by helicopter to Kathmandu. The samples will arrive in Barcelona in the coming weeks to be analyzed. We're some 10,000 kilometers away from the Everest, back down on sea level and in much warmer temperatures. This is Barcelona's Hospital of Santa Croix y San Pau, where the Sherpa Everest project was born and the research is underway. Let's find out more. The two mechanisms that allow us to adapt to extreme altitudes are evolution that occurs over thousands of years and epigenetics, or the study of changes in organisms caused by the modification of gene expression. When we're exposed to extreme environmental situations, be it high altitudes or lack of oxygen, our DNA sequence doesn't change. What does change in these situations is how we regulate those genes. That is the expression of those genes, and that's what we want to study. Samples taken in the Himalayas will be compared with those of 50 patients suffering from respiratory conditions like asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and chronic oxygen deficiency. The aim of the project is to study how we adapt to oxygen deficiency at sea level, at Everest Base Camp and after trying to reach the summit more than 8,000 meters high and to compare it with people who live at Everest Base Camp in an oxygen poor environment. So who will benefit from this research? In addition to people suffering from chronic respiratory disease, it's hoped it'll help people traveling to high altitudes and mountaineers like Ferran Lottori, who says other challenges still lie ahead. Well, the truth is that after climbing all of the 14 8,000ers, I have other plans, like opening up a new route on an 8,000er, which I've so far failed to do. I also want to try climbing Everest's northern slope without oxygen. And then I want to climb Serratori, the north face of the Eiger. Those are all the things a mountaineer has to do before he can hang up his hiking boots. Whether the goal is scientific, athletic or personal, it's an invitation for everyone to pursue their own Everest.